the last few days, we've been looking at how to calculate Gibbs free energy, that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S equation to determine if reactions were thermodynamically favorable or spontaneous at uh, standard conditions, 298 Kelvin. Uh, there is a relationship between Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant that we were looking at earlier in the year when we were solving for K to determine if a reaction was product favored or reactants favored based on that value of K. If K was greater than 1, it was products favored. If K was less than 1, it's reactants favored. Uh, and then we've also been looking now at this Gibbs free energy. Is it spontaneous in the forward direction? Or is it spontaneous in the reverse direction based on if it has a negative G or a positive G value? So there is a correlation between Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant. Due to our current uh, situation, coronavirus, uh, we're going to kind of gloss over these first few slides looking at the Gibbs free energy graphs. If you really truly wanted to find out what's going on with Gibbs free energy and the correlation between that and the equilibrium constant, you can read about these first few slides in your textbook. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of skip over them and gloss past them. Um, but basically, the big idea to get out of these is that when you have a negative G value, your K for equilibrium is going to be greater than one products favored. And if it's a positive G value, your K is less than one positive G. There is a mathematical relationship for determining delta G under non-standard conditions. What if it's not at 298 Kelvin? But we're going to kind of skip over these ideas. We don't really need to know this too much. So the big things that you do really need to focus on for our uh, slightly modified um, coronavirus thermo 2 chapter is that when delta G is negative, your K is going to be greater than 1. It's products favored in the forward direction, thermodynamically favorable forward. If your delta G is positive, thermodynamically favorable in the reverse direction, so K is less than 1. And then if something's at equilibrium, your delta G value is going to be 0. So you might remember looking at those four situations. How do you know when a reaction is going to be thermodynamically favorable or not? Uh, and calculating that G, and as long as your G value was negative, it would be thermodynamically favorable. Some of those reactions under those four situations, the spontaneity was dependent upon the temperature. So how can you tell at which temperature it becomes thermodynamically favorable? So let's look at this reaction here. This nickel carbon monoxide compound there uh, turning into just nickel, the element, and carbon monoxide, a decomposition reaction. We know the delta H's and delta S's of all those chemicals. If at equilibrium delta G is zero, what we're going to do to try and figure out at which temperature does it flip is to go just past equilibrium to make it thermodynamically favorable in the forward direction. Delta G is the tipping point. So we could solve for the temperature at which the reaction becomes thermodynamically favorable by plugging in zero for that delta G, rearranging and solving for T. So if we take that equation, and we find the delta H for the reaction by doing the one mole of nickel times its H value of zero plus four moles of carbon monoxide times its H value, subtract the H values of our reactants, and we get a positive 189.9 kilojoules. It's an endothermic reaction. Then we do the delta S for that reaction. And we do our one mole of nickel plus four moles worth of carbon monoxide, subtract out our reactants, and we get a positive 0 0.5005 kilojoules per Kelvin. So positive S value, it is becoming more disordered. So the endothermic side of this reaction is not very thermodynamically favorable. That's not really a win for Mother Nature to have to expend energy to make the reaction go. It has to absorb energy from the surroundings. Uh, so it doesn't really sound too favorable. 
uh, to happen because of those conditions, but it is creating more disorder. So this is one of those situations where there's a, a temperature at which the disorder could overcome the fact that it's endothermic. If we plug in a delta G value of zero as our tipping point, because positive delta G is thermodynamically favorable in the reverse direction towards the reactants. Negative delta G is thermodynamically favorable for the products. So if delta G is zero, we're right at that tipping point for where it flips from becoming thermodynamically favorable in the reverse to thermodynamically favorable in the forward direction. So we plug in that zero for G. We know our H and our S from the previous reaction. We could solve for T. At 379 Kelvin, the reaction becomes thermodynamically favorable because the disorder becomes large enough to overcome that endothermic nature of the reaction. We needed our T delta S to be greater than our delta H.